Hey, everybody. This is Mario Dennis, your host for the Keeping It Real Estate podcast. And today I have a very special guest. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Before introducing her, I'm going to let her introduce herself. <laughs> All right, here for the end, I'm here to say, I'm with Mario Dennis Breton all day. I don't know, I'm not really good. So come on and take a tour with me. And that's who my guest is today. Hi, Kathy. How Hi, are you? Hi, Mario. How are you? You know, I, I was trying to figure out all day when I wanted to insert you rapping. And I said, <laughs> let's just do it right off the beginning. Let's get it over with the terrible rap that I have. I thought <laughs> it was great. And I know all the feedback you got was that it was indeed great. Um, how did that idea come about? Oh, my gosh. You're not. No one believes this, but it literally was on the fly. Literally, like I had no game plan. We were going to do the video and I was like, Jay, Michael, no one wants to watch a boring real estate video. Let's do something fun. So he's like, you want to drop some beats? And I was like, let's do it. So we just started. I mean, we didn't write any of the lines. Nothing was rehearsed. Um, it totally was on the fly. And I probably took us like a couple minutes for like each little thing. Just he just got a little down, 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 down. <laughs> that is so impressive. That is even more impressive. I thought you guys had like written it out and started nope. it. So it's a lot more impressive to hear that none of that happened that way. No, nope. it was a hundred percent strictly spitting bars on the fly. Yep, spitting bars on the fly. See, I'm not an, I'm not a scripted person, so that's why I'm glad we're not scripted today. Because very cool. Yeah, the Keeping It Real Estate podcast. We keep it real, but we do not script it. So that's like going to be good for you. Perfect. Um, Kathy, I met you a while back, but what, what I told you before we started rolling was um, I saw you in one of Aaron's events, um, the master class, and you were the most genuine person I've ever wow. seen in one of these panels. And that's why I really wanted to have a conversation with you because I feel um, <coughs> a lot of agents, people that are growing their business, benefit more from hearing from someone like you than someone that's telling them. Um, sort of the, the book version of what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but tell us a little bit about your business. When sure. did you start and how you got to this point? Oh, that's a, that's a long loaded question. Um, so I've had my license, my real estate license since uh, 2004. And I started off in timeshare of all places. Uh, I won't judge you for it. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, so I worked for uh, Starwood Hotels and Resorts and um, I'd always been in like some form of sales. Uh, and I had a friend that's like, oh my gosh, you're going to make so much money. You got to come work for uh, Starwood and work in timeshare. So um, I got my license and I did it for about four years, uh, about six months of it. I did the actual like selling the timeshare. Um, and then I did vacation packages um, after that. So what I really loved about it is it really... Um, gave me a great foundation for uh, assessing people. You know, you have like 90 minutes to talk to these people and kind of figure out their personalities and ask really great questions and deep discoveries. Um, and you just kind of learn to read people's body language. So I did that and it really was not like my calling. <laughs> um, I didn't really believe in timeshare. So I feel like that's why I did the packages. I feel like if you're going to sell something, you have to really believe in it. You can't force that onto people and, you know, make them buy something that you wouldn't buy yourself. And I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, so I, um, I was just tooling around online. I was like, you know, I love houses. I love decorating. And um, I started applying online for uh, jobs with new home builders. So I applied with KB Homes and I did like this long interview process. And I also applied for David Weekly Homes. Um, and David Weekly took a while to get back to me. And I had done all these interviews with KB and they were ready to hire me. And like two days before I was supposed to start, David Weekly called me and said, hey, 
we got a resume and I was like, oh man, that's like freaking like <laughs> a month and a half ago, people. But <laughs> hey, anyways, so something in my gut, I always love the Diva Weekly Homes. I said, you know what? Like, let's just give it a shot. So I, long story short, I did a um, phone interview and then she's like, hey, can you, can you come in like today to do this test? And I was like, sure, why not? So I had to do an IQ test and all these other things. So long story short, I keep saying that's even longer. Um, I, uh, I got the job. So I told KB, I was like, hey. What year was that in? 2006. 2006 okay. is when I started working in new home sales. So mm-hmm. as the market was approaching yeah, a peak. Yeah, the tank, pretty much. Yeah. I started at the worst time ever, which back then I was like, what the hell am I doing? But it really was great because I had to fight for like every sale, every number. People were bringing in crazy offers. Um, I actually uh, started selling in Baldwin Park. So I worked in Baldwin Park uh, for about four and a half years. So I had very sophisticated buyers, very high price points compared to like the rest of the market when everything was kind of tanking. Um, And it was just a great company to learn from. They have great customer service and they really teach you how to build your business and take care of clients, very process oriented. Uh, And I loved it. And I worked for them for nine years. Um, I was in Baldwin Park. Then I opened up a community in Windermere and then... I was like, guys, I want Lake Nona. They were going to be building Laureate Park. And I had lived in Waterford Lakes at the time. So that was it. I opened up Laureate Park. And that was in the end of 2011. Gosh, that seems like a long time ago. Uh, so It's almost 10 years. It's so almost yes. 10 years. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and that's it. And that's kind of been my farm. And I live in the area. Um, I love Lake Nona. I love all the growth that's happening there. And so... Um, uh, back about two years ago, gosh, it seems a lot longer, but, uh, when I was working in the neighborhood, my daughter was getting ready to turn five and I'd worked in new construction for like, you know, over 12 years. So I was literally, you know, working every weekend, every holiday, and I didn't want to miss time with my daughter. So I made this game plan that I was going to move into the neighborhood that I would eventually, um, kind of like go on and start my own real estate career. Cause I saw a lot of people in Baldwin park, like, they buy a home for me. And then like two years later, they're buying something else. I'm like, why you just like bought a house two years ago? Now you're buying another house. So they get something bigger, they get something smaller. Um, and then like around, yeah, like year five that the neighborhood was, um, you know, kind of under construction. I just said, you know what, I'm going out on my own and, um, that's it. And then ever since then, it's been amazing and feel really grateful, really fortunate. I, 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 it's funny because I, I started my career also working for a developer. It wasn't new home sales. It was more <coughs> of the condo conversion stuff. Oh, don't, yeah, don't I throw anything that. at me. <laughs> um, but um, what it did is, is it really developed a foundation of um, having a career in sort of with a corporate structure. And I thought that was a really important thing for my growth because it just kind of taught you chain of command. It taught you how to look at things from different perspectives. It taught you to look at sales from, you know, marketing, business development, growth, and just kind of looking at a a host of different things. And I feel like the new home sales reps that started or were around at the time of the crash, they all have like the same sort of like very strong foundation because like you said, sales were not being handed to you. You were having to (laughs) fight for them. Um, it was a very competitive market for builders and and only the best survived and only mm-hmm. the best thrived and, and you definitely did and you know David Weekly as well obviously but I think that's that's probably the the first page for this great story of yours and I think it's something that if you're a new agent or you're looking to enter into real estate I I think someone should look at you as the whole picture of Kathy and say hey this is not a bad way to develop a real estate career. I mean, like you put mm-hmm. in your time with a builder, learn. Yep. To- I, I totally agree with you because, um, I definitely, you know, I've always been in sales and, um, I feel like I'm good with people and I'm very genuine. And so, you know, I think if I hadn't gone through all of those struggles first, or if I hadn't gone into timeshare first, the fear of rejection or someone didn't call you back. Oh my gosh. Like I took them out and I spent a weekend showing homes and they didn't get back with me or, Oh crap, the sale fell through. Um, because then appraisals weren't going through back then. And the builders were like, Hey, we got to make money. So, you know, we're, you know, we're not selling as much, so we still got to make money. And, you know, I remember I lost like after months of even like new construction homes, I was like, well, I guess I lost that commission because you got paid when they closed. So, 
it really helped me deal with adversity um, as far as like the up and down roller coaster that I know a lot of agents feel, which is normal when you first start out. But because I've, I've done that for so long, like when I transitioned over, it, it, it doesn't phase me. Um, but in the beginning, it did. So I feel like it's really helped me with uh, I don't stress over that kind of stuff. It's more about like, am I getting back to people perfectly? Are they having a good experience? It's like different things that I, you know, I always worry about now as opposed to back then. So when you left new construction, obviously, there's the schedule change, meaning you have a little more control of your day than you did before. But did you feel liberated <laughs> in the sense of being able to run your business however you wanted to, like do the marketing yes. however you wanted to without the red tape? Did that? Yes, that was great. Um, that really, uh, so I'll tell you how, what pushed me actually, um, what pushed me to actually even go on my own um, as well is so uh, when I was working uh, for David Weekly, I had another builder kind of recruiting me um, that were also in the neighborhood and they were like, it's just going to be you and one other person and you know, you can make a ton of money. And I was like, gosh, you know, we had so many people now at Laurier Park. There were like six salespeople. So it was, you know, like, meow, meow, you know kind of smushed it down a bit. Um, and I hadn't gone on a vacation in a long time. You know, I'm a, work, I'm a self-glorified workaholic. I love to work. I like to, you know, stay busy. So that's my own doing. Um, but my daughter was at the age where we used to travel a ton. And we kind of just stopped. You know, when you have like little ones, you're like, oh, gosh, are they going to be a pain in the ass on the plane? Right. And, you know, rah, rah, rah. so um I hadn't been on vacation forever and I had just like the, when I just started at this company, I won like the salesperson of the year for the state of Florida. And I was going on like my second year at this company and they were giving me such a hard time of taking off for 10 days. And we wanted to go on this cruise to Alaska and they were like, well, you have to have your partner work for you. And so, um, she had to work for me for two weeks straight, like no days off, 14 days. And, they're like, if she'll work for you, then you can go on the trip. So when I got back from my vacation, I literally took a red eye uh, flight in, landed back in Orlando after being up for like, I don't know, probably 20, 30 hours because of the flights from, you know, out west. And then I had to work for two weeks straight. So it was like all of the relaxation and the fun that I had. And I was like, what am I doing? And like, why am I, I don't have a work life balance, you know, I'm not not enjoying this. And so other than my own desire to want to go out my own, that kind of just pushed me to the edge. I was like, I don't care about the money. It was more about the work-life balance. And that's really why I wanted to go out on my own to have that schedule and to feel liberated, you know, to do stuff and, you know, work when I could work. And so that's kind of how it all, it went down. <laughs> what, what a crazy way to run a sales department, to have your top people work to the bone, not be able to take this time off. It's just, and I hear this from a lot of new home sales reps, so a lot of reps that work for the builders. <coughs> I hear this all the time that, that the builders don't really provide seemingly a lot of freedom for someone to be able to kind of have a normal life. So it's almost like, it's almost like knowingly they're creating this sort of seasonal work where it's like someone is going to work for, you know, two years straight, no vacation, and then they're going to quit. And it just seems like an absurd way to run a sales center. Yeah, it is. Um, David Weekly was great. Like they were really great with their vacations and stuff. But you know, this other builder, I mean, it, that's just not sustainable when you're when you're working really it's hard. A revol it's a revolving door of sales reps. Yeah. And then you lose the culture that you have, um, because you have that revolving door. And then, you know, they're doing a disservice to their customers that were buyers. And then like, oh, well, my salesperson's gone and they got to go to a new person or a new builder, or a new salesperson. So oh, yeah, that's sort of become the new thing with with new home construction. Like, Whenever I sell a new home now, I can I have to pretty much have the disclaimer of hey, don't fall in love with your sales rep because if I had to make a bet, I'd bet that they're not going to be here in seven months when your home is done, and that's crazy because yeah. I tend to be right the majority of the time when I say that, and that's not a good trend. It's not. But a new a lot of um, reps from new construction end up doing um, general real estate, but not all do it as good as you do. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> where I don't the, do anything special. Where does this, all this creative juices for marketing come from? And um, all, the, all the visual aspect of it. Your brand is very visual and it's, it's very appealing to the eye. And where Thank does that you. come from? I, it just comes from my head. I'm not, um, I'm definitely not a process oriented person. If you ask anybody that knows me, um, I'm kind of, um, uh, I don't even think I'm creative, actually. I don't, I just know what I like. 
Um, and I'm just kind of go with like my gut and I like to do fun stuff. I don't take myself too seriously. Um, I really just go with like what I, what I feel, you know, like the ideas for like my, my logo. Um, my dad passed away when I was in my early twenties from cancer. And so the Cardinal is symbolic of him. Um, and then the house and then my initials, obviously. And I thought the colors were fun, um, and modern and clean. And I wanted something that would stand out that was like simple and not like typical tchotchke realtor with the glamour show, you know, um, you the, know, the prom, the, the prom picture with the poof. Yeah. And then you see the person, actually my picture doesn't even look like me anymore. Cause I cut my hair off. So, I mean, I do need a new headshot, but it, like, you know, you see the sum and you're like, Oh shoot, that's so-and-so like about like, yeah, like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You it's know? funny. So I just, <laughs> I just redid my headshot. So it's kind of as a rule of thumb, every two years I'll redo them. And, you know, a few people were like, man, I like your old one better. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I was two years younger. Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> aging. I don't know what to tell you. I like that guy better. But yeah, I just had to get Botox. So I keep the wrinkles down. So I'll be good. <laughs> um, but I like that the first adjective that you used to describe your logo was fun. And I think that's probably what a lot of your customers would say about you and the people that have interacted with you that that you're a fun person to work with and that's what comes across. And one thing that I noticed with you is a lot of the theory that, and I say theory because none of this stuff is proven, the real estate people um, try to talk, try to teach about social media as you keep a business page and you keep a personal page and you don't mingle them and blah, blah, blah. But yours is like, totally intermingled like this. It is. Who gives a crap what people say? I say go with like what your gut is. I mean, you know, I've, I've been to so many sales seminars. I, you know, um, you know, my brokerage Keller Williams is a great brokerage. And, you know, I used to joke around with my old team leader because I was like, Dave, I'm not freaking door knocking. That's just not my personality. I'd rather see somebody and, and have that relationship and be with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. And like, that's the key to real estate. Like, you know, there's all these things like, oh, go to this seminar, go to this class, do this, do that. Just be a good person and be yourself. It's not rocket science. It's not very profitable though. If yeah. you just tell people to go out and be a good person, you can't sell them on a bunch of classes and seminars. So, and if you're not a good person, like people are gonna be like, great, you can they keep on spending the money. And I don't mean like a good person, like, I mean, you yeah. know, but I mean, just like do the right thing for your customers. Um, yeah, enjoy stay, what you're stay doing. on top of things, be an expert on what you do, know your shit like that. That all goes with being a good person. Right. Um, so, so you're with Keller Williams, which the interesting part is, it didn't even register with me like what brokerage you're with because your brand is so powerful wow. like you're just <laughs> like this power figure standing on your own um so that's interesting because i didn't even um research that beforehand yeah um, everybody always um they think i have my own brokerage i mean and maybe because the keller williams is like a gray kw and our, i wanted to kind of match the logo but most and people your name is Kathy, me. so there's Kathy, yeah, yeah Kathy williams maybe <laughs> 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 um yeah, I, I just, uh, yeah. So anyways, I, I hope I'm fun. I, I think that real estate can be a real drag sometimes and you deal with like really great agents and then you deal with like God awful agents, you know, you can pull your hair out at night. So at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and connecting with your customers and your, your partners, whether it's lenders or I don't know, your inspector, the guy that cuts the lawns that your handyman person, you know? Yeah. Um, do you have a team? Do you have people that work with you? What's sort of the structure of your business right now from a personal standpoint? Uh, I have a poor, like, do not anybody take any notes on this. I have a very poorly structured business. Um, I actually just interviewed. That, an, is, that is so much horseshit because if I it was poorly God. structured, you know what? No, I'm dead serious. It's, it's, it's like, it, it's poorly structured. Like my, our business, my business is literally 98% referrals. So um, I That's don't, good. yeah, I love it. And, and it's all those years of, of, um, being in new home construction and, you know, building relationships and then like, you know, they'll refer you to somebody else and somebody else. But, um, I truly, we do not, I don't pay for like advertising or marketing anywhere. Um, so like the structure, like I, do you have any admin staff? I don't. Um, I had a person, maybe sometimes I would use them for transactions. Um, and then I had another person on my team that would help with like the, uh, the Kathy Herford Holmes Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Um, and she would, you know, just like schedule like, uh, posts, like whether it's articles or pictures. Um, and then our Instagram account, you know, I do commingle everything because 
I don't want to have to manage a million pages and I don't feel like I'm putting anything on my personal page that is like offensive to people. Um, I'm a big passionate person for travel. And so you, you'd be surprised how many people ask me like, Hey, help me plan my next vacation or tell me about where you went. And I love to talk about that. Um, I think it's important, you know, unless like you're like hanging out in the club till, you know, three in the morning and you're posting pictures, you're doing shots or something, but I really, I don't see the problem of missing your, uh, personal page in your business, unless you want to be, have more privacy. I mean, I think you should still have maybe a business page, but I just don't think those are fun. Who wants to see the same old stuff? Like people want to know if they like you, like, do they like Mario? Does Mario seem cool? Does Mario have the same kind of friends we have? What is Mario wearing today? Was he driving? What You know what I mean? Like where did Mario go on vacation? Um, like they know your daughter, your kids, like my daughter's like her own little, um, everybody knows her because I post a lot of things about her. Right. My husband's not so much, um, likes to be in the spotlight. So we try to do limited photos with him. Um, so yeah, I, I don't see why. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the reason I was pushing back when you say you have a poorly structured business is because I feel like the dream in real estate is having a business that's mostly based on referrals. Check. Yes, check. That's the success right there. Having a profitable business. Check. Check. Economics are such a good way to judge whether you have a good structured business or a poorly organized business. So... I get what you're saying. Like what the gist of what you're saying is that you don't have an organized structure with people with defined roles within it. And and, and that everything, every hole is in the dam is being covered. Correct. You know, you're you're on the fly a lot. But that doesn't mean it's a poorly structured business because it meets the two most important requirements as far as I'm concerned of a real estate business. It survives on its own, meaning you're not... You're not depending on an eye buyer feeding you business or this lead source to be able to keep the lights on. You're you're self-dependent. So that's the dream. Number one, check. Mm -hmm. And the number two is you're profitable. Obviously, you're profitable. You're taking vacations to Africa. So (laughs) so um, so I I assume you're profitable, making an assumption there. But I think I think I'm not off base. Um, So that's why I say, you, you know. You may it could be better. It could be a lot better, and I'm working on that. Yeah, you may feel like like you're a tad bit disorganized on it, but but it's people should definitely pay attention because you are doing the thing that everyone should aspire to do, which is those two items that I mentioned. Well, I appreciate that. Um, when it comes to travel, it's so much fun to follow <gasps> you. By the way, if anybody is listening to this that wants to look her up, um, you'll see her name in the bottom of the screen, Kathy Herford, and you got to see her page because she travels all over the place. I've seen lions. I've seen all sorts of crazy things. Tell me about your most recent travel adventure. Oh, oh my gosh. We don't even think of enough time in the podcast for this. So um, ever since I've been a small girl uh, many years ago, I've always wanted to go to Africa. My husband loves animals. I love animals. Um, It's just been like on the bucket list. So Uh, The one thing I'll say is like, if you don't plan something, like we can all be too busy and find time. I literally like, you know, I would, and I'm going on a tangent here. This is like my, this is me. Go Um, for it. uh, uh, You know, if you don't sit and plan a vacation or it doesn't have to be like to Africa, it could be like a weekend getaway or something. If you don't literally put it on the calendar and force yourself to go or pay for it, like you're not going to go because you can always make an excuse like, oh, I've got this going on or I've got that going on because that's how real estate is. Right. So, um, I have to, every quarter, I have to plan something. It's a goal, like if I'm working 12, 16 hour days, because I don't have that organized structure of a team, um, but that keeps me motivated. And I'm like, oh, I just, I knew I just booked that. I got to pay for that. So um, I'm planning on going to Germany, to like the Christmas markets um, in December for like you know, nine days. So that's like my next vacation. And maybe we'll do something spring break and then, you know, we'll do something in the summer. So getting back to Africa, which is what you asked me. Hello. Um, that was amazing. If you have it, uh, you know, in your budget or you want to save up for it, it is amazing. It, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, just because you go over there and I could get teary eyed just talking about this. Um, when you meet the people that live there, you know, it's really, it's really inspiring because they have so little and they're the happiest people like the kids, um, they're the way that they live in their homes, you know, like we're so fortunate here and yet we are never satisfied as a culture. You know, I'm sometimes I'm like, Oh, that's not good enough. You know, and it's like being grateful for what you have. So, um, it really taught me a lot about like 
simplicity and like how wasteful we can be with whether it's just food or just our time or not enjoying our environment. And when you're there, um, you're just in just in nature, you know, depending on where you're at and it's quiet and there's not really any vulnerable, I imagine. And vulnerable and um, you are yeah. food, you're food for a lot of things. Yeah, you're like the food source. Uh, it was great. I didn't wear makeup for like two weeks. My skin was like perfect. My hair, I look like a hot mess half the time. And I was like, this is awesome, you know? So, um, but it was definitely amazing. We had the best time, the best experiences, so many great memories, the scenery, the animals, the food, the people, the music, everything. Yeah, the good thing I think sometimes about where we live in terms of time and place is that Obviously, we are blessed that we don't have to worry about, like, where is the <clears> next water. glass of water going to come from? Yeah. Like, that's not, you You never wake up one day thinking about that. Like, there's a storm, you know, looming in the horizon now, and, yeah. like, water doesn't, it's not really like, oh, where am I going to get water? It's like, oh, I'm just going to go to Walmart and get a case of water, yeah. you know? Um, but one thing is that that vulnerability that you feel when you go to those places and you can feel it yourself because obviously you're in a strange place and you feel it through the people that live there because you realize just how vulnerable they are yeah um that it really teaches you a lot what's one lesson that you brought from africa that you're trying to implement um because it sounds like it really it it was sort of an eye opener for you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I haven't really practiced it, but really just not being, um, really not being like so wasteful and being really, um, more grateful for like the things that, that you have. So, you know, like I always had, this is probably if anyone was like a sales coach, they'd be like, okay, you're definitely, I, I, I never had like these aspirations of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to make up. So, just so you know, sales coaches don't like me. So they don't listen to this. Don't worry about okay, that. Okay, good. <laughs> They, they wouldn't like me either. Um, I really wanted to, you know, like everyone's like, oh, you're going to have a big team and start this and do that. Like, I'm really happy with where I'm at. You know, and that, it doesn't mean that I don't have goals because I think I don't think success is money. I mean, you know, money does get you to do some of the things that you want to do. So for me, that's, you know, travel and time with my family. So coming back, I've really kind of um, embraced more of just being happy with where I'm at. And if my sales numbers stay the same or they go a little bit less, or if they go a little bit more, I'm good with that because I'm happy with where I am in my life. I'm not trying to keep up with other agents. Um, I'm not out for like, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy if I win an award or I'm recognized for something. I'm really happy for that because it shows your hard work. But you know, if I'm not the number one agent or I didn't win this award or not that, you know, it's, that's not why I'm doing this. That's not why I got into doing my own thing. So being in Africa just made me realize like be in the moment, like be happy with what you have, you know, work if you want to work with what you're, you're working for, whatever your goals are. Um, so I feel like I've been doing an okay job with that. Um, you know, I mean, it's always a work in progress. So, yeah, I mean, but it's such a beautiful lesson and it's, you know, maybe someone that's listening to this, that's, that's not in the industry may listen to it and be like, well, that's self-evident. And I would say to that person, it's not because in our industry, what we get is consistent pressure through everywhere. Like, listen, you may not be the most competitive person in the world. You're still going to get invited to three or four award ceremonies every year. So it may, puts everybody in sort of this competitive mode, even if they're not the most competitive person. And, and it really takes sort of having that introspective view of yourself and saying, you know what, I'm. No, I'm not going for I'm not that. going there. Yeah, because you can get yourself, you know, we're all we're all self-critical and you know everyone's trying to be like I want to have market share here. I want to have market share there. And I think what that ends up doing is it ends up making the business not fun and then you get like stressed out and you're not jo enjoying what you're doing and you can never be grateful for what you have because you're like well, now I'm not, I, I was like in the top 100 realtors. Oh my gosh, now I'm like 125 or something. You know what I mean? Whatever your goal is. So I think it just kind of takes the wind out of people's sails. So I've always had a terrible mentality. I don't want to be the best and I don't want to be, be the worst. I want to be better than average because I know myself. And if I try to push to be the very, very best, I'll get there. I know I will. But to sustain that is a really, really hard thing to do. And maybe some people are really great at balancing their life and work and being a husband or a wife or a mom or a dad or whatever. Um, but I don't, I don't know if that's, you know, sustainable to do for forever. I, I don't think it is. And I also don't <clears throat> think it's for everybody. And I think that's the thing that, I, that one of the messages that I think people should take out of this podcast is that 
you can make an uh, you're good dong, you, dong, dong, so klutzy yeah, that's um, how i broke my toe again too by the way just you, klutzy. <laughs> you can you can make an excellent living in real estate without being this hyper competitive person you you definitely can and and don't let outside influences change that in you and so you know i i I, I think what you're saying is something that really like people, if they're going to do the sort of their, their dream board or whatever, instead of putting, you know, number ones and Bentleys and dollar bills, just put time with your family, put some, yeah, the simple um, stuff. Yeah. The stuff that this, the stuff that you're going to be grateful for when you're in your deathbed. Um, that's kind of how I'd look at it. Um, yeah. because when you're in your deathbed, I don't think you're going to be like, ha, I, I had that Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> I was number one agent in Lake Nona three years in, in a row. You yeah, know, like and then there's another. There's always somebody. There's always somebody bigger, better, stronger, faster, prettier, uglier, whatever you want to say yeah. than you. Especially like, we're you know we're in a market with Jenny Weimer, so it's like yeah, a, it's Jenny. A, <laughs> <laughs> I um, love Jenny. Yeah, she's the best. Which is a good friend that we have in common, which yes. was awesome because um, I think that. It, it helped me a little bit sort of understand how good of a person you were because I really think she um, she's someone that when someone's friends with her, I, I, I'm like, this has got to be a good person because Jenny don't take no shit. So. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm super excited. There's a uh, conference. It's called Amplify. And Jenny, if you're listening, I kept calling it like Uplift or something. But um, it's down in uh, Vero Beach or Jupiter Beach, Vero Beach, something like that. One of those beaches. Uh, and it's like the top 10 like powerhouse women in, across the country in real estate. And it's really not about real estate. It's really great. I wanted to go and I'm going because um, Jenny's going to be there and a couple of other agents from out West. And it's really about um, how to be a better uh, partner, how to be a better leader, how to be a better wife, your, get back in touch with your health, spiritually, mentally. Um, I think it's really great to do those things with other, peop other people because we're all going through the same stresses of life and balancing it all and running a successful business. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I, I really like that type of event. You know why? Because... It also takes you out of the echo chamber because for whatever it's worth, I think, you know, even though there's great brokerages out there and I'm not trying to disparage any, there is sort of an echo chamber, almost like mentality when you spend all of your time only in your brokerage, only with the people that you sort of, you know, share that that space with. So yeah. it's, it's good to get out and talk to agents from different brokerages, people yeah. that are going through the same things in different markets, different brokerages, different, you know, walks of life. I think that's always very valuable. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, uh, you know, like I don't ever go into my office at all. So, you know, I just feel bad because like, you know, I don't like, I don't participate in the Keller Williams Red Day and all those other things. And I, you know, I don't have anything against it, but I'm just usually like, you know, out and about or. Um, and appointments and stuff. So, you know, I feel like I'm kind of <laughs> clueless as to what's going on in the office. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you know what part of that <clears throat> is, is you have a big fingerprint on your business, meaning, you know, you don't get to have 30 hours a day. You have the same 24 that the rest of yeah. us do. So, you know, you're making a choice to be you know, to develop your brand and do the things that are helping your brand. And, you know, and I don't mean helping your brand just in a monetary sense, but right. just kind of putting your fingerprint quite literally on your market. And, you know, and that's what you're doing. And that's perfectly fine. And I think that that works really well. And it doesn't mean you're not doing good things. Also, it just means you're doing them on your own time. Yeah. And, and, and different things like, um, like I was telling you earlier today, uh, our neighborhood's very community centric. So, you know, they have like a, a national neighborhood late night out and it's like the third year running. So um, the first year we started this chili cook off competition with the neighbors. So, you know, we sponsor that. And so there's, there's different things that we do, um, you know, and uh, people always ask me, like we used to joke around, I should have a hashtag ask Kathy because like, Hey, do you know, like a lawn person or a, or a plumbing person or, Hey, where did you get that dress? Or, Hey, I'm, I'm going on a vacation. Where did you get your packing cubes? So, um, I love to help people doing that as well. And that's another thing, um, which if people are listening, like, you know, it does, you don't have to just talk about real estate to help people for them to, um, connect with you, you know, be you and let people choose if they want to connect with you, like make yourself authentic and vulnerable, like get on there. Like, I feel like people, like they'll tell me and I've just met them like, Oh, I feel like I already know you. Um, and I don't put like my, all my personal business on there, but if I have successes, I like to share them. If I'm having a bad day or positive words that, you know, going on a trip, whatever, because 
if someone likes you, they might say like, Hey, you know what? Like Mario's in real estate, you know what? He, he raced cars. You know, if you want to know, maybe he knows a good mechanic or something. And I know it's not real estate, but in turn, like you're helping that person, you have nothing to gain from it right now. And that's, and that's fine. You might never have that, but someone might go, yeah, he was a cool guy. I like him. Go reach out to him for real estate. Like people don't realize the power of just being kind and helping other people, how that will come back tenfold. And you, you, you won't even be able to, it's kind of like almost like an, in, un, in, an intangible thing that you could even put a value on. I imagine that you are getting business out of your social media accounts. Like, um, so I ask, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. You asked to say that again. Like, I know you said I'm getting business off of it, but yeah, I, mean, like, I, I imagine you're one of the agents <clears> that is occasionally <throat> getting a message from someone saying, Hey, Kathy, we we're looking possibly selling our house or we're looking possibly buying a new house or we have a friend coming in town and, and I, I presume you're getting that out of your social media account. Yeah. So, um, typically how I, how it works is I'll usually just have like a Facebook message. Um, they're like either people in my neighborhood or friends of friends that are like, Hey, you know, we saw this or you did that. Um, um, I wouldn't necessarily like I could quantify it from like a professional page, but just random people or, or they'll call me or maybe they Google something or they'll say, we've been watching you online or we love that you do the staging in your homes. All your listings always look really great. Um, we love your photos. So thanks, Vic DeVore, DeVore Design. You're the bomb. <laughs> and Jay Michael that does our photos. So, <laughs> um, I think one of the things that it's important is that you use um, your social media accounts in a social way, meaning you're connecting socially with everybody else. And, um, and I feel like almost um, a lot of us in real estate and and I think I've been very guilty of this. We use our social media trying to make it into a um, sort of a hook for business, not just to interact in a social way with people. And it's a slippery slope, I think. Yeah, um, that's, I don't, I, if I was trying to even think like, I'm so bad about like wanting to post stuff and go, oh, here's like the market stats. Cause that like, it's important, but it bores me. And if it, and I feel like I'm kind of a, more on the hyper high energy fun side. So I'm like, yeah, people want to know that, but they can go Google that or go look for that themselves. So I do think um, being social and just being genuine and, and interacting with people is, is more important. Like, yeah, you have to have a purpose, but I don't think it has to be like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm going to get so many leads from this. Like, I don't think I've ever gotten a, a quantifiable lead from having a poster where someone, you know, saw something and they're like, oh, let me click on this little button here. And, you know, all of a sudden it's like, boom, you know, I feel like it's like a hoax. Is, <laughs> is Facebook you, your go-to social media platform or do you spend more time on Instagram? How? I do both. So um, Facebook, I Facebook, I feel like I can post more things um, because, you know, you can you have like more space to, to say something and post more photos. Um, but I know people like those quick snippets of video. So um, I, I pretty much go back and forth. So I have a personal Instagram account, which I put stuff on. Then we have our Live Learn Nona Instagram account. And then I have, um, you know, then I have my my Facebook website, you know, page for my own personal page. Um, the Kathy Herford Holmes one, the Facebook page, it's kind of more, not really fun. <laughs> it's more like stats and statistics. And that's kind of where we keep stuff there. And then the Instagram, like I love doing like little polls. And it's fun because you like seeing all the people that are like following you. And then you can see um, what's kind of cool is you can see the people that have the interest in you and then you're like, okay, well that person, maybe their sphere is who I reach out to or they're watching me. Maybe it gives you insight on, you know, if you know that person, if, if it's somebody that you might know more, maybe they're, maybe they want to sell a home. Maybe they're looking to buy a home. Maybe they're checking you out to kind of see what you're all about. It also is a good way for your clients to see, like if you're advertising, you know, their properties and different things. So I think it can be multifaceted. Yeah. I think that the, there's a big utility to still having the business page and mainly like if you want to do the sponsor posts for specific listings that yeah. you have. So that's, yep. that's one of the, that's a main reason to have a business page for sure, to be able to do those targeted posts. Um, but but it's just fun to see you be able to blend both of them because it's it's very contrary to what's what gets taught in a classroom setting. Yeah, um, I'm ha- scripted over here. Sorry, I'm like a I'm so rogue. <laughs> yeah, no, you're fine. You're, that's perfect. Um, <clears throat> one thing is, I I th- I really think you. I feel like most real estate agents can relate with you than with the average agent, the average agent being the more scripted sort of um, person. And, and, and I know you kind of have made this concerted effort that you're okay with the business that you have, but I really, 
I really hope to see you more in front of classrooms because and, and in front of crowds of people because I think I think there's a lot of specifically young agents that need to listen to your message that you oh, don't have to you. have this <clears throat> perfectly crafted business plan from the onset like you don't have to have all these perfectly coordinated things to to make a living in real estate I think um, that's part of your message that I really, really like. Yeah, I think I think we, we put too much thought into things. And if we just keep it simple, you know, the old keep it simple, stupid. I mean, just build relationships. Like if you know people and you're a good person and people like you and you're genuine and you're and you follow through on what you're going to do and you're good at your job. Like if you're starting out, yeah, it's going to take a while. But, you know, once you hone those things like the referral business is going to come there. You don't, it's, there's no magic bullet for it. It's not like if you make this many calls, you're going to sell $10 million of real estate this year. Like, yeah, the statistically, but like, that's not fun. Like be yourself, have fun, go to lunch with somebody like, Hey, I haven't seen you in forever. Like I find it very like, um, obnoxious. Like if I hadn't talked to somebody in four years and I'm going to go, well, let me go through my phone and call someone. Hey, Steve, I haven't, you know, I haven't talked to you in like five years. Did you know I'm in real estate now? Like Steve's going to be like, go screw yourself. Like we're, you know what I mean? Like it's so obvious. You're just calling them because you want business and you haven't earned the right, in my opinion, to ask them for their business at that point. Like go back there and, you know, work on the people. Maybe it's only three people. Then maybe it's five, maybe it's 10. Work on those relationships and kind of earn the right to get their business. You know, I mean, yeah, it's, <clears throat> you know, it's funny because the the whole, like, call <laughs> your entire sphere and tell them they're in real estate. And I'm, I'm like, I think at this point, everyone in Florida has received three calls from three <laughs> relatives or friends. Oh, my gosh. And I know some people do that. So please don't think I'm, like, ragging on you. It just it does not work for me personally. And I just think it's hokey. Or the Fizbos. It's, like, the expired. I know a lot of people make a business on that. But, I mean, like if you have to keep calling FISBOs and expireds, like you're constantly hustling, like let your phone do the work for you, build that business and earn it and those relationships. And then your phone rings and you don't have to sit on the phone and go, yeah, F you goodbye. And they hang up on you because you're the 30th person that calls. Well, I listen. And I think there's a really, I think it's a viable way to build a business, the FISBO next and expired. But to your point, it I can't think be forever business. The only way that it can be is if you're Kathy Herford personality wise and people fall in love with you and then you build a referral business from the original Fisbos and expires Correct. that you called. But, you know, sometimes the, the interesting part that I see with people that are really dedicate themselves to the Fisbo and the expire thing is what you're saying is that that's that's the wheel they're turning and then you, you know, they've been doing it for five years and you're like, okay, so what percentage of your business is referrals? 10, 10%. 20, yeah. And you're like... 10%, but you've sold 200 homes over the last five years. You mean to tell it's me like crazy. none of those people it's moved or knew, you know? And so, so that's the part that I, I think anything you do in real estate to build a business, the end goal needs to be referrals. Like the end goal yeah. of what, listen, even if you're buying leads, let's say you're buying a, a bunch of Zillow leads and you're closing them. That's fine. Yeah. Just turn them into referrals also. So yep. the next year you can buy a little bit less and a little bit less. And do yeah, this. keep your keep your money in your pocket, and you know, let your good work and your your um, genuineness of of just taking care of your clients will speak for itself. It's like the best money you can spend. It's free. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. And you know, with commissions being compressed in the market, I think being frugal with your spending should be the next big thing in real estate. Like, if real estate, if, if we if we are looking for the next big silver bullet in real estate to help real estate agents. I think it has to be figure a way to run your business spending 20% less than you're spending today. And, yeah. and, and that comes with a building a referral base. Yeah. I mean, um, that's like, that's one of the things too. Like I didn't get to go to the, the last, uh, thing that Aaron had the mastermind because I had to go to the doctor cause of my broken toe. Um, but I really wanted to go there cause there were some really great agents that were like, Hey, you know, about the referral and the, you know, when I, when I watched some of it, they said, you know, letting some of their past customers go cold. So, you know, don't do that. And so I feel like I'm getting the point now where I'm like really, really busy and I, you know, we do customer appreciation parties and things, but that's not enough. Like I've got to call them. I've got to get in front of them and, and see them. And so, you know, finding that balance of being more structured, like you said, I, you know, I'm not, I'm really feel like I have a lot to learn and still grow. 
but that will help. And so since I've only been on my own two years now, I feel like I'm not so in the weeds, you know, so that will really, uh, that's really like the focus for myself and for our team to just stay on top of our customers and stay, you know, top of mind. So. Do you have any interest in training other agents to work with you as buyers agents or um, listing agents within your organization? Yeah, so um, I do, but I feel like I would. I feel like I'm not at a point structure wise truly where I, you know, I, I try to feel like what would be the value of, of someone coming on the team, and so you know, um, you can take more vacations. That's I know, I, you know, I, and I do have a great team where like, you know, when I went on vacation, like really my, most of my vacations, I do check in, you know, but that went to Africa, you know, I have another phone and I just, I just turned it off and I, you know, let everybody know and set everything up ahead of time. Um, I don't have any like aspirations to have a huge team, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always open to helping people or people call me and ask me questions all the time. I think people that are structured and I feel like most people need a structure because I'm not super structured and I have a crazy creative brain. Um, I feel like I would have to get more structured where it wouldn't drive people crazy that if they came on, they're like, oh my gosh, where's this, where's the manual for the policies and procedures on that? And so I don't have that. So maybe one day, you know, it'll get there, but you know, I'm always open if people want to reach out to me or ask me questions about new construction. I know a ton about homes or just anything in general. That's very cool. Um, is the majority of your business going obviously in the Lake Nona area, but um, are you also doing business outside Lake Nona yeah. and other parts of Central Florida? Yeah. Um, so I would say like probably 85% of our business, maybe now about 90 is Lake Nona. Um, but we've had stuff uh, in Edgewater, um, Winter Garden, Winter Park, downtown Orlando, um, Waterford Lakes, quite a few. Um, gosh, where else? Pretty much a little bit of everywhere, you know, um, Dr. Phillips. So you know, I feel like I lived in Waterford Lakes for a long time and over in Dr. Phillips when I first moved to Orlando. So know those areas really well. Um, yeah. So it's kind of mostly like Nona. I feel like to be a really good agent, I mean, if you're listing, um, I feel, you know, just my personal opinion, you know, focus on an area where you want because you can be more strategic with your time. You know, obviously I'm not going to turn down a listing, but you know, if you're going to go to do showings and go to meet appraisers and all those things, it's, you know, our time's very precious. So to kind of keep it consolidated to one area, and then you're the expert. Like I love that, you know, one of the great things I know about myself is if I'm talking to somebody, I know every house that's for sale in my neighborhood. I know if they had a price drop and there's, oh gosh, there'll probably be like 2,700 homes in there, but I know like what's going on. I make it a point every week to check out when I do my seller updates, like, Hey, this house just came on the market. Oh, this one dropped their price. So even when you go on another listing appointment, like they know, you know, your shit, you know, and you've got to. And I I love that. I love that because, because I, I don't want someone to misconstrue the fact that you, you might be a little disorganized in the way that you run your business self-admittedly with that you don't know your shit no you know your shit i know my shit and, for sure <laughs> and so you're a very likable and a very nice person oh, and you're nice. a lot of fun but you know your shit and if i had to put a, if i had to make a bet i would make a bet the majority of people are calling you maybe because you're fun or whatever like those are added factors but they're still calling you to sell their 400 500 600 dollar piece of property because they know that you know your shit so that's still hugely important. It's it hugely is. important. Yeah. I mean, especially like where we are in Lake Nona, um, there's so many houses. So, you know, a lot of people have a friend of a friend or someone that's an agent. And I see it all the time where you'll see like, you know, myself and another agent or two have like a good market share in that area. And then you'll see like this one off person and like, they're like, oh, well, that house should be 220 a square foot, but they don't understand the dynamics of the neighborhood. So like having worked for um, the builders in there, I know the lay of the land. I know what areas are more are more special and about the different lot sizes and the location. So there's a lot of, you know, intricate pieces. And then on top of that is all the growth, you know, that's happening in the area. And you have to educate people on that because they have to be sold on the location first. I mean, there's tons of homes and choices people need. So once you can really zero them in on the location they want to live. That's like the most important thing is if they haven't settled in on that, they're going to go look at this one, that house over in this neighborhood, over in that neighborhood. And for the listings, I have to be able to, you know, let people know other agents that are coming in. They don't understand the neighborhood or the area themselves because it is very, very overwhelming. It, it's, it would take probably uh, a good year or two for people to really learn the intricacy of it. So 
Yeah, and and that's that's a big part of it. That's a big part of your business is that you know it front and back. Mm-hmm. You were new home sales in the same area. I and know all the floor plans. I know the different uh, features uh, of right. the builders. And and not only do you know all of this because you were an, uh, a new home sales rep, but you're a naturally curious person. So mm-hmm. you've gone the extra steps. Always you ask know, questions. To, yeah, to ask questions, learn the pro- other products of other builders in the area. So And I live um, there too. So, you know, I live in the day to day and see everything that goes on. So, you know, if you want to make a successful real estate business, find a neighborhood that um, you can live in and be the neighborhood expert. And, you know, there's other agents that'll be in there as well, but like be that expert and like own it, like live, work, play, have that be your place. And then, you know, sky's the limit. Yeah. That's a great message. And I think that's a good way to close the podcast. Thank you so much for yeah, coming, Kathy. thanks for having me. Um, if someone wants to get in touch with you and learn more about your business, what is your business page link and all of that good jazz? Uh, sure. So um, the best way to get a hold of me really is um, you can email me at Kathy at LiveLearnNona.com or my cell phone number is 8675309. Just kidding. It's really 407. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Wait, 8675309. Um, no, my uh, my cell phone number um, is 407-575-8977. So like a text message or phone call, I'm always on my phone. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Mario. Thanks, Mario.